firstly, Abbalim Tamim said, my uncle asked the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about a person who imagined to have fast wind during the prayer. So a person's making salah and he doubts whether he fast wind or not. He felt something from his backside, but he's not sure. It happens to people. It happens all the time. He's not sure. Did anything come out or not? What should he do? Now you can say either. You stay, you continue. Or you say, be safe and go take wudu. Stay and continue. Stay and continue. Right? What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? He said, La yan sarif. That person should not get up. He shouldn't leave his salah. Hatta yasma'a sawtan aw yajida rihan. He should not leave the prayer. He meaning don't get up until you hear a sound or smell something. So he shouldn't leave until he hears something or he smells something. Now what is this hadith teaching us? That you don't, number one, you don't pay attention to doubt. Right? So what if somebody knows he passed wind, but he didn't hear it, nor did he smell anything? That's not a doubt. You know you passed wind, so that, this doesn't apply to you. This applies to the person who's not sure. He felt something, but he's not sure. He's 100%. He's not sure. He's 50 50. Did it? Did it? I'm not sure. In such a case, this hadith applies and says to him, Don't get up until you are certain. Meaning, either you heard something come out or you smelt that something had come out. Now you have certainty. Now you're sure. Now you can get up. But if none of that happened, you just had the doubt, don't get up. Which means don't pay attention to the doubts. Yes? If you, if it's bad was -wasa. Sorry? Bad waswasa. Bad waswasa is a result of doubts. So what this hadith is going to teach us is how do you deal with waswasa? And how do you expel waswasa? So what is waswasa? Is when the shaitan, bad waswasa, you mean what we call al waswas or al wiswas al qahri. It's insinuating whispers on the shaitan that overwhelms a person, right? So that person has shak or doubt over everything. Did I take wudu properly? Did I make salah properly? Make sure to repeat the salah? Did I break my wudu? And they do things over and over and over and over because the waswasa is confusing them, right? But this is the key to overcoming waswasa, this hadith. And from this hadith, the ulama derived a principle and this is one of the main principles of the Sharia, ah, which says, Al yaqeen la yazulu bishak. What does this mean? It means certainty cannot be dispelled by doubt, whose certainty is not removed with doubt. And this is a principle you must remember because it comes in handy throughout your life, whether you're praying, taking wudu, in any matter. Many times, this principle, you need to apply this principle. Certainty is not removed with, with doubt. What does that mean? What is certainty and what is doubt? Right? Let's take the case of wudu as we are speaking about that. So you've taken wudu. Before Maghrib, you took wudu. You're certain you have wudu. By the time Isha came about, you were unsure whether you broke your wudu or not. So what do we do? We apply the principle. Certainty is what? You took wudu. Is not removed with a doubt, which means ignore the doubt. Block it out and act upon your certainty, which is, I have wudu. No matter what waswasa you get, you say, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem, to chase the shaitan away, and you act upon what's certain. If a person does that consistently, he will overcome the shaitan's waswasa, because you are basically shutting the door to waswasa. But the moment you open the door to waswasa, then it comes and it, it comes over and it becomes over that's when it becomes overwhelming because you open the door how did you open the door you paid attention to his doubt you understand shaitan is calling you he's, he's opening he's knocking on the door and you open the door and that's when he comes in and he he's just going to drop more and more and more as was until he gets control of you in the sense that he's going to confuse you and so forth so the the key is expel the waswasa shut the door what is my certainty what is the doubt Act upon certainty, ignore the doubt, and you say bismillah, and you carry on. This is the, the key to over, overcoming waswasa. Okay? Yes? Is the salah the same? Oh, salah is the same. What do you mean? Uh, I mean, 
Okay. You messed it up. You're not sure. Okay. So if you're not sure, then you act upon certainty. Meaning, I'm not sure. Is it the third or the second? I have doubt. 50 50. I'm not sure. So what do you do? You go to the lesser of the two. Because that certainty, I know for sure I was at least I did one. So this can be the second of that. But you understand? So that's certainty. And you ignore the doubts and you continue from there. And then you make sujood so sahwi at the end before the taslim to make up for any error that may have been. Understand? Um, so whatever the cert whatever the, the, the certainty is, meaning the certainty would be the lesser of the two in, in the case of doubt. Understand? So this principle would still apply. And then you make the sujood, as I said, at the end. And the Prophet وسلم, said, if there was any shortcoming in the salah, the sujood sahwi makes up for it. And if there is any addition, let's say you made the extra rak'ah because you went to the lesser of the two, right? Then that is a that is a humiliation for the shaitan. Because you didn't pay attention to the doubt, you followed the sunnah, you completed the salah, it's accepted by Allah, inshallah, you humiliated the shaitan. So this is the key to overcoming the waswasa. It's also humiliating because he tried. He messed with you, but you overcame him. So you humiliated him. Alhamdulillah. Okay, so al yaqeen la yazulu bi shak, very important principle. Right, I gave this example already. If a person purified himself for fajr, that's certainty. He's got wudu. And then when he came to dhuhr, he was not sure whether he broke his wudu or not, that's doubt. The ruling is that he remains in a state of purity and does not need to purify himself again. As we said, if you take wudu for the sake of the sunnah, that's something good, but it's not fard. It's not. This is the view of Hanifa, Shafi, and Ahmad based upon the hadith and the principle that we mentioned above. Right? Let me flip that situation around. Let me flip that situation around. Let's say um, if you don't perform the sujood sahwi in a salah where there was doubt, is it accepted? If you know you're supposed to, then you must. If you didn't know in the salah, you know, you know, it's done, and inshallah it's accepted. If you did it recently and you can make up for it, and to be on the safe side, make up for it. Allah knows best. Um, let's flip the situation around. Let's say you, you prayed Fajr, you broke your wudu, you slept. Deep sleep, you woke up. Right? Went to the bathroom, freshened up at, say, 8 a.m. Come Zuhr, you're in the masjid, you start Salah, Allahu Akbar. And then the doubt comes. Did you take wudu or not? Now you're sitting here, did I take wudu or not? So what do you do? What must you do in the situation? What must such a person do? He must take wudu. Must take wudu. But you said earlier on, you said earlier on, people said if you doubt him, you have wudu. <laughs> the certainty is that you did take wudu. Okay. All agree. The certainty is you slept. Ahsan. Same in the comments. The certainty is that you slept. Right. So in such a case, the certainty is what? You broke your wudu. You know you broke your wudu. You slept. You woke up, you went to the bathroom, you relieved yourself, you freshened up, meaning you washed your hands and so forth, you maybe brushed your teeth. But by the time door comes, you're not sure, did I take wudu or not? That is doubt. So wudu in this case is not certainty. Your wudu now is doubt. So now you need to tell yourself in such a case, I know I broke it, but I'm not sure, did I take wudu? That means I don't have wudu. So that what people say is not right. If you doubt and you have wudu is incorrect. Understand, it depends what is certainty and what is doubt. So we must understand the principle correctly. The principle is not if you doubt, you have wudu. The principle is certainty is not removed with doubt. Understand? Certainty is not dispelled by doubt. That's the principle. And it's based upon the hadith that we, that we mentioned earlier on. So this is important to understand. Right? If you doubt, what am I certain of? I know I broke my wudu, but I'm not sure if I took wudu. In such a case, you have to repeat the wudu, because that is doubts. Ignore the doubt, take wudu, and carry on. 
understand? And all I know is best.